Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to kick off uh, this uh, session at, with you, and we've got two more great speakers to follow. So I'm going to jump right into it and talk about how to target up to 300% gains using $1 options. So this is a one of my more popular topics and strategies because of the fact that you can get started with as little as $100 to control 100 shares of stock. Uh, so it's something where you can get a uh, Tremendous leverage, um, and we're going to talk about how to manage risk with the more uh, proactive options buying approach. Before I get into it, just a reminder that everything that I share with you today, as well as the other presenters as well, uh, share is for your information and education only. Nothing we talk about here today should be considered a specific recommendation of buy or sell any particular investment. Of course, you know that you are 100% responsible for your own investment decisions, and Big Trends and the staff are not responsible for any trades you choose to make. Not all Big Trends products and services are appropriate for all traders and investors. And Big Trends does not provide personalized financial tax or legal advice to any individual. What we do instead, by the way, is we take our, our recommendations, send them out as real-time emails and text alerts. You can then decide how you want to implement that in real time. Do consult your tax advisor before you make any investment that impacts your unique tax and financial situation. If you don't know me, I've been trading for over 30 years, um, graduated from Duke University in 89, kind of went into trading thinking I knew it all and made those classic early mistakes. And so what you see that uh, uh, I did to realize a better change quickly if I was going to stay in this game for the long haul is I started to get much more into the strategies and the research and the systems, the more the take the emotion out of it and let the system tell me when to get in, when to get out. Then we take our system research and send it out via the real-time emails and text alerts to our subscribers. Blessed and be inducted in the Traders Hall of Fame in 2007, launched Big Trends in 99. So I'm here to share with you what I've learned across several decades worth of options trading experience. I really do like these uh, cheaper options. A dollar or less per contract means uh, to control 100 shares when you buy one contract, you got to multiply that dollar times 100. So it's 100 bucks to control 100 shares. Why can that be so powerful when you're talking about oftentimes stocks that are trading uh, in the hundreds of dollars per share where it could cost you tens of thousands of dollars or more to buy 100 shares of stock for and you can control that for just 100 bucks or less so it really gives you tremendous leverage potential we'll talk about a little bit about the greeks i don't want to get too technical but gamma is a term that a lot of people don't don't hear much about so we'll talk about why that's so powerful with this strategy i'm going to share with you not one but actually three different key technical analysis filters with this $1 options approach that I call Grand Slam Options. So we're going to talk about the CCI. That's the Commodity Channel Index. So we're using individual stocks here that we can trade options off of. So we're not worried about the futures markets. We're interested in the stock market and which stocks are moving the best. We'll talk about my big trends bands and also the average directional movement or ADX. And, and a sneak peek at my favorite small account trading strategy. So like I said, you can get started with a very small amount of money. I do ask that while you're here, throughout the Investor Expo that you pay attention. Uh, I see too many people who are trying to multitask, do too many different things, and then doing none of them well. Um, so I, I don't know if you know, but the, the, it's proven that multitasking actually lowers your IQ, makes you less smart. So let's focus on just uh, lessons I've learned across decades that you can get in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. So uh, definitely focus is important as a trader and as a learner of any new uh, technique. So let's dive into some examples right now about why these $1 options can be so good. You, a lot of you have probably heard of AMD, that's Advanced Micro Devices. It's been hot for the last several years, really. We've uh, done really well with it. Um, you know, a lot of people know that Intel hasn't been doing as well because AMD's been cutting into that chip business that Intel used to dominate. And just let's just look at a sample from the past so you can kind of get some flavor. We'll show you some more current ones as well. But basically, what I want, what I like about this chart is it shows me not just the breakout where we profited, but also the fake out that we missed. So sometimes your best trade is not making a trade. Have you ever thought of that? Everybody thinks they've got to go in there and make a trade every single day. But you know what? If I see my indicators going into this setup mode here, this is the overbought uh, CCI in blue here, and we've got the percent R in red, which is Larry Williams' percent range indicator, which then I converted into a band that I can see if this is an attempted breakout here. It doesn't close through that first green bar high. You see how it tries and fails. Exit out. It's not gonna. It's not gonna confirm. I'm not interested because my philosophy and what's been backed up by decades of trading and, and data is that 
you want to see that the institutions are pouring the gas onto that particular trend that they want to keep buying that stock. If they just pop it and then it can't keep going, then it tells you that, okay, it's not getting the follow through that's needed. So when you get the next setup here where things are starting to go into the overbought territory, we're going to talk about each of these indicators. Percent R and the CCI both signal again on the, this, looks like this band breakout here. And notice the next day, it doesn't close above that high. So do you turn it off? Not if they're staying overbought. You can see we're still staying in the overbought territory for both of these, and then we, the following day, close above it. So you see that at that point, check mark, you're confirmed that you want to get into a bullish position on AMD. What do we do? We go out and we look for an option about a month out, give or take. So we were uh, here in the third week of July. We're buying the August, third, third week of August, a month out, 75 strike call. It means we've got a right to buy AMD at 75 bucks a share. Why would you want to own a right to buy it at 75 bucks a share when you can see the stock's trading back here closer to 62? Well, because that right to buy at 75 gets more valuable as the stock goes from out of the money in the 60s up to the mid 70s. That's called at the money at 75 and then in the money as it goes above 75. A lot of our profits are taken and we do them at several different levels here at a double 100% gain, we sell half our position. Okay, so that's our first target. If you sell half at a double, what does that do? It gets your risk capital back in your pocket. So if you put a thousand bucks into a trade, for example, uh, and this one we paid a, a hundred bucks per contract, so you could get, say, 10 contracts for a thousand bucks. And then you say, okay, well, if it doubles, I'm going to sell five of those 10 contracts. I'm going to sell half my position out. It's now gone from one to two, and think about that. So then five contracts out of 200 bucks a piece, there's your thousand bucks back in your pocket. You still have five contracts left that basically now it's the proverbial free trade. If it keeps going, you've got a, a, essentially a risk-free way to keep riding that. If it does reverse back down, we've got some rules about where we'll just blow it out and, and still make some money on the trade overall. But you see that what happens here is that the next, uh, the, the, the day after we got in, actually the stock dropped a couple of points. We don't put an initial price stop on these. We use what I call a time stop, more on that in a little bit. But what we do is we say, okay, once we start making money, we start putting trailing stops in there. We send a real-time email and text alerts to all of our subscribers and grant some options. And so, okay, now it's time to raise our stop on this rest of this position. Instead, we get our next target at 200%. That's a triple on your original investment. The dollar has gone to $3. How is that possible? It's only at $70 right here as we were taking that triple. And our 300% target was hit as it's up around maybe 72. We got our final target in just a, a few trading days. So you can see here that, okay, that's a four bagger and the stock went from what, 62 to 72. It went up about 15%. Um, and so we made 300%, so that's about 20 to one leverage. You could theoretically find trades had more leverage, but you know what, we'll, we're happy with that over just a few days and we'll move on to the next opportunity. Of course, think about what that could do if you put a thousand bucks into a trade and you've averaged nearly a triple, you know, then basically you're taking almost a couple thousand bucks worth of profit home off of just one trade. So the potential on this is tremendous, a trade at a time, knowing that you can lose what you put into a trade. Every once in a while, when we use that, our time stop rule, something has happened where the stock's gone haywire and you say, okay, this is why you don't want to put too much of your capital into any one trade. Never get um, too concentrated, we tend to recommend five to no more than 10% of your capital going into any one trade of the money you set aside to trade grand sum options. You don't just have to trade the big blue chip household names though to make a profit. Here's a recent example of a, of a tripler that we had on a stock that most traders have never heard of. Let me ask you if you've heard of it. Use your chat box. This will tell me that you're paying attention here. Have you ever heard of a stock called Macerich, symbol M-A-C? Give me a Y or an N for a yes or a no to tell me if you're following along here. Uh, Macerich is one that the pattern was the same. It's just not a name that a lot of people have heard of. Most people are saying N for no that you hadn't heard of this one. That's okay. You go back and look at the chart. What is this stock? It's a real estate investment trust. As you know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people are betting that, well, anything that's got real estate's toast, right? If you've got commercial real estate, everybody's working from home. So those office rents are going to collapse and therefore they're toast. If you've got a mall property, nobody's going to malls. They're all going to buy online. So they're toast, right? Well, that was the case for a while. And then, as you know, things started reopening and we go through these cycles of reopenings and potential closings. So they're volatile. But the point is, is that there's a lot of bears, uh, short sellers who bet on the stock going down. They sell the stock first, hope to buy it back cheaper. As you know, short sellers, 
can get burned when the stock starts to go up, they start losing. So they start pouring on more buying power when they're, when they're on the wrong side of the trade. What are we seeing on here? One of the biggest lessons I want you to take home is that when an indicator like say percent R, the red line just stays over bought here, that's a very powerfully bullish thing when something stays over bought. The CCI, which we plotted here in yellow, a little harder to see, that was breaking out and confirming right back here. Why didn't we buy it there? Because we were waiting for this third leg of the stool. This is the ADX. It was confirming at the close here that it was ready to trend, in this case, to the upside. So we bought it right off of the open uh, there on that next morning. That was May 26th. Stock's trading just above 15 bucks. We buy a 16 call out to June. The third Friday in June is the traditional monthly expiration for June. And so we're buying about a point out of the money. What do we pay? We didn't pay the buck. We paid 70 cents. So that means to control 100 shares of Maestrich, we were paying 70 bucks. Now the stock was trading about what would it cost us 1,500 bucks. So it still looks like about 20 to one leverage against the underlying shares. Notice what happens. The stock starts to rally and then it pours on the gas as we go up here into the 18 to 18 and a half zone. We're taking our double and our triple. We got to maybe about 250% on this trade. We didn't quite get our, our quadruple. And then our trailing stop was hit as it started to roll over. We may only made 155% on that last piece of our position. So we've sold half of the double, quarter of the triple, the final quarter plus 155. Notice at that point, it's still in the overbought zone, but basically it's just kind of chopping around. So we get that money back, we roll it on in into something else. So we don't just trade household names, but we do trade names that have plenty of volume. So just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean it doesn't have a lot of volume. This one had plenty of action and plenty of opportunity to get in and get out easily. So I don't want to trade something that's just me against the market maker in the options pits. You know, I want to be able to say, look, it's it's something where we know it's us against a lot of other traders. These one dollar options are incredibly powerful. We're talking about tremendous leverage ratios, and so the beauty is you can just start stacking those those trades together. And this is how we beat the markets in a pretty massive way over the last, uh, in this case, about four and a half years. You can see that four and two thirds years we've our grand slam options portfolio if you started with a model five thousand dollar portfolio you'd be up to over twenty two thousand for a seventeen thousand two hundred twenty four dollar profit before commissions this assumes that you put in a thousand bucks per trade no more um, than that so sometimes a little bit less than that depending on what the price we recommended on the option was but then saying okay you know what um, as you know one of the best things that's happened in my 30 plus years of options trading is is the broker price war that happened a couple of years ago Schwab and Ameritrade went back and forth and cut commissions down to zero for stocks and ETFs and for options cut them down to virtually uh, nil that you should be paying less than a buck a contract on your option trades and you should be paying no ticket charge no no set fee so that way you could even trade one contract and buy one contract at 100 bucks and pay no more than a dollar for that uh, to get into it, and preferably a lot less. I hear some clients saying they're paying as little as a half buck a contract. So you're keeping the vast majority of what you earn these days. So this is a 344% gain on a model $5,000 portfolio. Um, of course, uh, you start trading you know, bigger dollars, the, the amounts just grow and the profit dollars. But I always encourage people to start small and build. So that way you gain confidence and trading is scalable. You can scale it up or scale it back as you see fit. But beating the market averages dramatically over several years is a lot of fun. What about short-term profits? How quickly can these options double? So a great example of this is Moderna. You know, it's one of the big vaccine names, mRNA is a symbol. And the speed of movement is what we've got to have. We have a need for speed when it comes to buying options, because as you know, time is something that you don't want to let go too far by. Uh, you know, while you're in a trade that you purchase an option on. The beauty of this was that Moderna was trading at like 168 when I called it out um, off of that chart here back in uh, April 22nd. And when the stock was just under 170, look at the strike price we were buying. The third Friday of May, the 230 strike calls. That was 60 points out of the money. You think about that in percentage terms, you're pushing towards, uh, you know, as you can see, something in the neighborhood of about 33% uh, out of the money. Well, if you, if you say, okay, when well, you paid a buck for that, that seems really expensive, right? Moderna can move very fast. Go look at an mRNA chart now and you see it's gone up a lot higher 
in recent times uh, with all the vaccine stuff going on with the Delta variant. But the point being that, you know, they got that double the first day. Now, we're not day traders by nature, but if the market says, hey, you've got a double on the same day, do you want to sell half your position? I say, absolutely, yes. I want to take off uh, my risk capital out of the trade. Anytime I get the chance to sell half of anything at a double, I do it. And so now I give it a chance to keep running. This is a great example of one where we sold half at a double, then it, it it went up a little bit more, then it came back down, and the next half came out closer to where we got in, and we maybe averaged closer to 50% on the total trade. So so the beauty of that selling half at a double is that sometimes they keep going, sometimes they don't. So trading is not black or white, it's many shades of gray. So you have to be willing to say, look, I'll sell a few contracts at the double and give myself a chance to have it keep going because if it doesn't, I don't have any risk in that trade. If it does, I'm so happy I kept some contracts on the table. One of the big things I tell my more risk averse types of folks that are getting into this is that don't just be happy taking a 20 or 30% gain and saying, well, that's about as good as you usually do, so you'll take a 30% profit. That's not what you're looking for here. You're looking for many point moves and looking for doubles, triples, and quadruples here. So so how do you find that momentum? What are the indicators that drive this technique called grand sum options? Well, one of them is the commodity channel index. Donald Lambert developed it at the start of the 1980s to trade commodities. I've shown it to work on a lot of big name growth stocks. One of the reasons I like CCI compared to a lot of other traditional indicators like moving averages or other uh, popularized oscillators is that CCI, doesn't just look at closes. Uh, Lambert said, look at the high plus the low plus the close divided by three. And he says, that'll give you your typical price. So he's putting as much weight on the high and the low of the day as he has on the close. Of course, as you know, if we close at the high, then you're going to have a two highs and a low divided by three. That's going to have a pull to the upside on that kind of a calculation over whatever look back period you want to go back and study the last five, 10, 20 or more bars of action. Likewise, if it closes at the low, then you're looking at two lows and a, and a, and a high divided by three. That's going to have a pull to the downside. So once you average out all those day-by-day uh, -day or bar-by-bar -bar measurements, then essentially you say, okay, um, you're, you're going to get a, a, a momentum based on are we tending to close near the highs? That's showing strength. Tending to close near the lows? That's showing weakness. One of the biggest lessons you can learn here is that overbought is not bad. Overbought can be powerfully good. Most people hear that word overbought and say, well, I can't buy it. It's overbought, right? I'm saying if the institutions want to get on board, they're going to keep buying and buying and buying and making it more and more and more overbought. How many times have you looked at a chart and said, well, I thought it was overbought weeks ago, and look, it's gone even more ballistic to the upside. This is a way to ride those kind of strong trends and still have a way out if it's not working. So let's look at a strong CCI example. Here's one of the uh, fang blue chips, Facebook. Uh, of course, Facebook, you know, you're going to have to pay a bit of a premium for the fact that these things can move very quickly. You can see the back here on this chart, the CCI was just starting to break out right here. So when it says it crosses that plus 100 threshold, we call that a setup. We don't call that a, a buy signal until it closes above that high, which happened on the next bar. The CCI was confirming, ADX had just confirmed, percent R had just confirmed. So when CCI came on board, we said buy that next bar right off of the open, even though it's a little dip. We say, Shouldn't you be worried you're losing momentum? This is what we call a retest. The retest is when you come in to, it looks like it might be coming out of that overbought zone on percent R. You see the CCI kind of stalls here, but ADX, the green line, we're going to talk about that next, keeps going up. So we buy right off of that about two, in this case, about 280 level. Look what we paid. We, we bought out to the third Friday in April. We bought a 320 strike call. So 280 to 320, of course, 40 points. You're talking about something that's like 13 or 14 percent out of the money, right? We can see in the next two days it ran up. On the first day after we got in near 280, it ran up to about 290. Then the next day after that, it ran to about 300. So, you know, we're, we get 20 points of that back real quickly. You can see that later on in, in April it was pushing towards 315, but we've already bolted. We bought it for 99 cents. It's 99 bucks to control 100 shares of Facebook stock that would have cost you 28 grand. So you can see you're getting tremendous leverage here. And then as the stock pops that next day, we got our 102%. And then as it starts to roll over intraday, we take the 85% on the second piece and say, it's good enough for us. We didn't get to our triple target. We'll just take the double-ish area and run to the next opportunity. So we got out before it reversed back down over the next few bars of action. 
What about ADX, the average directional movement? This was developed by Wells Wilder, who's the same guy who developed the RSI indicator, the relative strength indicator that's so popular as an oscillator. But what ADX is measuring is how much net new highs are you getting? That's the DMI plus. How much net new lows are you getting? That's the DMI minus. If you're getting more new highs and no new lows, you know what that's called? Uptrend. Same way if you're getting all new lows and no new highs, you're getting downtrend. So so what ADX is geared to measure is when it starts to turn up, it shows you we're in a trending phase. So the beauty of this is when we go and look at some uh, visuals on this, you can see like fresh ADX example like AstraZeneca, AZN. When they were announcing that they were going to come out with their COVID product or, or their, their COVID trials, their first COVID trials they were doing in conjunction with Oxford University last July, you can see ADX was just crossing up off of a relatively low level. What what we do is we say, if we get this cross point, the directional movement lines are positive in blue and then the negative ones in red. When the ADX crosses above that lower directional movement line, in this case, the, the negative movement's going down, that ADX cross up from a low level tells us, this is the start of a trend, folks. This is something that has potential to go and really kick off to the upside. Whether it does so quickly and sharply or whether it does so on a more steady um, pronounced grind to the upside we're betting that the the wind is at our back now for an uptrend so as the stock rallied there uh 58 or so we're out there buying 65 straight calls out into the third friday in august some three and a half, or four and a half weeks till expiration and you can see in this case we bought it for 83 cents it's 83 bucks to control 100 shares of stock that would cost you about 5800 dollars to purchase the stock so um so you see that it doesn't take a big move it goes from 58 pulls back the next day to 57 we don't panic we're, we say the time stop rule will will get us out if it's not working so while we're down on day one we're up on day two as it rallies to 61 we take our double target and i think we even got our triple 201 percent target right into a friday's close and then people said why are you holding this they're going to announce their results over the weekend I said exactly we've got a free trade on we're betting it's going to be a positive it rallies from 61 to 64 that next Monday morning. We take 357% gains on the final piece. So just over three days, we got 100%, 201%, then 357% uh, and took the money and ran. Because once they announced those results, you can see it sold right back off. Uh, so that's another good reminder to say, buy the rumor, sell the news. This is why that, that works. It's like buying in front of that news. And then once we get the news, no matter how good, saying let's take something off or take, in this case, the rest of our position off the table. So um, not every trade is going to hit its, all of its profit targets. Another AZN trade we did um, earlier this year, back in May, you can see we're getting the breakout. It's been over bottom, both the, the percent R and the CCI. And now look what's happening to the ADX as of uh, May 17th, we're getting our confirmation. We want to be a part of this. And you can see the stock's trading in about the 55 and a half zone on its way to 57 and a half. So only a two point rally still gets its our double target. So that's an example where if you buy the right kind of option at the right kind of time, you don't have to get the massive leveraged move. You can just get the, and, the, and the big stock move because sometimes you'll you'll pay for those through the nose in the options market. This one's options were fairly cheaply priced. We only paid 69 bucks a contract to buy the out of the money option that went to become an at the money option. Therefore, when it traded up to 140, we said, take the money and run. This one came back down on the second piece. A few days later, we said, okay, we've gotten our first target. Now we don't really want it to go below a break even. So we raise our trailing stop there and you can see at, at, um, at the trailing stop getting tagged when it comes back down we we lose one and a half percent on the second half of the position so add those two pieces up divide them by two and you still made 50 percent on the overall trade so that's a good reminder that you don't want to be complacent you don't want to um, just sit back and hope everything comes together so if you see something that you don't like then essentially you um, you figure out how you're going to how you're going to structure that going forward to make sure that you don't get hit and stuck holding the bag. So for us, giving back too much of our profits on the total trade would be unacceptable. That's why we sell half at a double. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about big trends bands. As I was saying before, the percent R says, you know, when something goes overbought here, then what you'll often see on, a, on an overbought signal for Williams percent range, percent R, 
is that it goes over a bot and it saves over a bot. How is it possible for something that's supposed to be in a range to be then staying so over bot? Because it's marking the recent look back highs. What's happening here, it's making higher and higher highs. So every time you get a new bar of action that makes a new high, percent R's range is really actually expanding in the form of an uptrend here. So that's what I love about these is actually it kind of becomes a misnomer where it's no longer about finding the range. It's about finding the trend, the moves that are unexpected that stay over about longer than you or I would have possibly ever conceived. So you can see in this case um, we're with Baidu, we got our double, triple, and quadruple in four trading days. And invariably somebody will say, yeah, but you could have made even more money a day or two later. And I say, I could have, but you never know based on the history history of these uh, setups you know you never know when it's going to um, be one of those top trades but we know when we line all three of the indicators up we get a much higher probability of success it's kind of like the 80 20 rule here we're looking for the top 20 percent of percent our readings above the 80th percentile i look at a, a positive grade school scale i want to find a plus stocks i want to find stocks that the institutions are eager to own and will keep buying to keep pressing them even higher and higher and higher so that should be your job, too, is saying, you know what, you want to own quality. You want to own then options on that quality to get even more bang for your buck. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We're happy to let go of that possible future upside for taking that money and running uh, to the sidelines when uh, appropriate. So you look at this and say, okay, when we line all three of the pieces up here, you say, okay, you got percent R breaking out here. You've got the CCI breaking out a day later. So they're they're both confirming by about this bar. ADX is already confirmed. That's kind of unusual for ADX to be confirmed a week ahead. So we're in there buying right off that next morning's open. These are all um, trade station charts. And then you see the steady uptrend. And yes, you can see that everything stayed over bot until it started to come back out of that zone, maybe back in this area. But you can see that uh, if we just trail stop, sometimes you'll get a gap against you that'll make for a disadvantageous exit. So we want to say, let's make sure um that we uh that we really um are focused on taking money gradually but as the market makes it available to us we'll lock it in so we've talked about the technical indicators for the underlying stock what about the options let's talk option selection why do we like the monthly options and why do we like them out of the money if you look at the classic greeks and you've probably heard of some of these greeks if you traded options at all like theta is the time decay element T for theta, T for time. Delta is the bang for the buck you get on a one point change in the stock. When I started uh, big trends, I was mainly trading in the money options what's quote a high delta. Say an 80% delta would mean that if the stock moved up a buck, my options should move up 80% of that. That's an 80 delta. Um, so if the option's at $10 and it's now at 1080, when the stock makes a one point move in my favor. So, you know, I might have a hundred dollar stock go to 101 and, and goes up a percent. I make 8% going from 10 to 1080. I've shifted to say, you know what? And we're not worried about Vega because that's a volatility adjustment usually tied around earnings. We're not messing with that here. But basically saying, you know what? Gamma is how fast you can pick up deltas. So what usually happens is that if you go up, start at an 80 delta option, you get that one point move in your favor, then that tells you that that next point move might have a delta of say 82. That jump from 80 to 82 on the on the total deltas would say that the gammas would show you that you pick up about two deltas on that second point move in your favor. That's not very much. And what will often happen when we're looking at out of the money option, it goes from out of the money, maybe it's say a 35% delta, quickly goes to at the money with a 50% delta, goes in the money to a 60% or higher delta. So for our perspective, we're um, looking at it like, where are we gonna get the best bang for our buck on the rate of change of delta? So if delta is gonna go on one point move from 35 to 40, then you're picking up like five deltas versus the other example where you're only picking up two. So you can more dramatically pick up that excess bang for your buck. Uh, with understanding the gamma approach. Now, when we look at, keep going here, we've got more to share with you. Now, how about an intraday signal on one of the most popular stocks in the planet? You can probably guess which one I'm thinking about. It's Apple, okay? This is uh, an Apple 60 minute chart. So we're usually using daily charts, but we'll use short intraday charts as well. And you can see we're getting a signal on Apple as it had this little burst up here the morning of 
June the 21st. So you can you can see that uh, as we get that signal, we get the first kind of kickoff. Then we do get a pause, so you can you can say, okay, where do you bail? Um, and and we've got very clear clear rules for that as well. But you can see as we keep riding and we get our double here about after about a week. And after about the ninth day, you can see we're getting our triple and our quadruple. So 102, 203, 304%. Um, very steady gains that we're able to take out of that particular uh, uh, Apple trade in, in about nine trading days. So it's just one of those situations where you can see things staying overbought. That's powerfully good. Of course, we'd trade a lot of these names uh, that you've probably heard of, a lot of the big tech from Microsoft and all the FANG names. To of course, um, you know, we mentioned Baidu, Baba, Alibaba, and then some of the financials like say Goldman Sachs or Visa, Mastercard, casino stocks like Vegas Sands, and Win of course have been more hurt by those um, those in this case uh, casinos kind of going through the highs and lows of the whole COVID shutdowns and reopening attempts and shutting back down. So see how that goes, but. But essentially what this means is that when you add up these layers of very liquid active stocks to go with this time-tested momentum signal, using the $1 or less options, you're getting tremendous bang for your buck and you're not having to um, wait around to see what you're going to get as an opportunity. You're going to be able to focus on the best of the best situations. So the beauty of this is it's it's a real unique combination, fairly simple on each of the individual pieces, but you've got to know how to execute it properly before you can reap the rewards. So one of the th and one of the things that we do, I want to talk about the time stop for a second, is that we put a five day time stop on these trades. So the time stop says, okay, if I'm if the stock's not moving in my favor after five trading days, remember I'm buying about a month out, give or take. So if I use a week of that next four weeks up as, as the time period I held the trade, I've still only used a quarter of the time in the trade from the time I got in to the time I get out five days later if it's if the stock's not moving in my favor. If it is moving in my favor, I'll keep giving it a chance because it shows me the potential power of that. And the beauty of that is that we've had a number of stocks that would have faked this out, a stock like Morgan Stanley um, got, a, got a pop down over the next two days after we got in. MS is a symbol on that one. Uh, we, we, when the stock was at like 47, we bought like a 49 strike call, then it dropped down to like 43 and the stock dropped 10% against us the next two days. The option was down like two thirds of its value. Subscribers were concerned. I said, don't, don't bail on this. Give yourself a chance to stay with the trade and give it, and we've still got three more days for it to pan out. And then it ground back up, kept, hung in there. And then by the seventh day, we were booking a more than triple on the total position when it gapped open to 50 one to 52. So point being that don't be impatient and or don't get whipsawed by um, improperly placed stops. So, if, but once we start making money, especially a double plus, you'll see us really start trailing those stops. So you'll get updates about that as a subscriber. And then we always have a dedicated uh, line for our customers that can get through to me and my analyst team if you've got questions on the trades. Or anything else, you know, we've got live bodies that are standing by here at Big Trends to help you through whatever questions you might have. But we're big on giving a dedicated email to our paying subscribers. You can reach me and my analyst team with questions in between uh, the weekly video updates that I do. So, like I said, if you came in late, um, I've been able to generate um, uh, on a five thousand dollar model portfolio. The the service had generated. Uh, a gain up to about 22,000 and change. That's a $17,224 gross profit before commissions, knowing that your commissions should be down to next to nothing. Um, and if if they're not, then it's something you need to in, explore yourself to find brokers who will be happy to take your business and not charge you um, so much on your commissions if you're considering a move. But the beauty of this is that, okay, it's really crystal clear, simply laid out. We we call it out and say, okay, buy this option at this price. So that way you don't have to worry about, okay, what are they doing this? Because then once we get in, we'll, you'll, we'll say, okay, we'll tell you either it's time to get out based on the time stop, it's time to get out based on a profit target, or just in general, we're just saying that we're going to blow it out and move on to the next trade after a certain amount of time. So we get a lot of questions about this. And so, yes, it's just simple options purchases. No spreads are, are involved here. 
you can start with as little as four thousand dollars because my recommendation would be as i said before you know if you if you did no more than ten percent of your portfolio into any new trade if i said four thousand bucks is your portfolio well then that'd be ten percent would be four hundred bucks into each new trade so if you think about that you go okay well i can stomach that because if those um if it's just a few of those trades go it'll be more than worth it relative to the um the the risk of getting flushed out or, or turning a profit into a loss or something silly like that the beauty of this is that we'll do about six to eight trades in a month so over the course of a year you're talking about between 70 and and uh, 90 trades call it 80 on average we'll be in the trade anywhere from a few days to a few weeks real time via email and then you can also get them via text alert I'm giving you several bonuses today that I want you to be able to kind of expand your learning power to go with your earning power. I'm going to give all the folks that take advantage of my uh, best special, which I'll tell you about in our next slide. I'm going to give you a few bonuses here. I'm going to give you my Grand Slam options, settings, and rule sheets. So it tells you exactly what you need to plug in to follow along at home. You don't have to do this because we'll call it out explicitly with which option to buy at what time and what price um, when when the when the new recommendation comes out and uh and then uh so and then you got the weekly video updates and then i'm going to give you my gamma options digital boot camp on demand this is multiple hours of training about how to find these really powerful options uh setups and as a result you know how you can find the next big grand slam options type of a trade so what you'll see is when you when you add those pieces up. I mean, we've got loads of educational value here. Of course, the big the big benefit is that usually 12 months of, of the trade callouts would be about four grand, $39.97 on my website. I'm going to take the 12 months and I'm going to turn it into 24 months for you today. I call it a BOGO special, um, where basically I said, you know, um, Investors Expos and on have been really good to me. So I'm going to give you a really good special here, which is instead of buying a year, which even if you bought a year at 997, that would be a steal. I'm going to give you a second year on me. So you're going to get two years access, which remember, if you think about it in terms of trades, that's that's over, that's about 150 trades at minimum over the next two years. Um, and you think about that at the normal package value versus now you say, okay, 150 trades, right away you're getting your trade costs down into the under seven bucks a trade area. And that's not even counting all the bonus education here, the Grand Slam rule sheets, my Gamma Options Bootcamp, which by the way, you'll get lifetime access to, unlimited lifetime access, watch as many times as you want um, once you become a subscriber. It's, it's the trades that have the limitation on no more than 24 months that I'm offering here at such a low price point, but I'm giving you all these bonuses, including the lifetime bootcamp access. That teaches you about all these options principles like Gamma and more. So you know what to do. And then, of course, my weekly video updates. So get all that, too. All in, cross out that $9,000 price point and say, I'm going to cut it down to just 997 bucks. So where do you need to go? You see in yellow in the bottom here, this is a special link. It's not a www link. Notice it's members.bigtrends.com forward slash GSO24. Why GSO24? It's Grand Slam option. So that's GS in the letter O. And then it's 24 because you're getting 24 months instead of the usual 12 uh, for this uh, this very special offer. So let me just paste that over for you real quick and say, okay, you know what? What does it look like when you get to that page? What it looks like is this real quick. You'll go to that page and it'll say, boom, look at how simple this is. There's not a bunch of uh, type or hype on here. It's just like, look, you're already saving 85 plus percent, almost 90 percent on this offer. We say, okay, look, you're you're going to get trades that can generate up to 300 percent profits. You can get started with as little as 100 bucks a trade, or you know, like I said, I'd prefer to see you get into not just one contract but four contracts, so you can target not just the double but also the triple and the quadruple on a number of these. Um, we'll we'll guide you also through every trade. You never are left hanging. So it's that's real, always been important to me to say, you know what, even if it's not a winning trade, I'm going to tell you, blow this trade out. Let's go ahead and salvage what we can here, and then let's go ahead and, and move on to the next opportunity. So you can uh, review the terms and conditions, which are spelled down, spelled out down here in full. You can click on that link, review those terms and conditions, and once you've read it, click that button. You can either pay with a credit card or PayPal here. PayPal is so easy these days. Um, I really personally like it myself, and a lot of things that I do, point and click a couple of 
quick login and a click and boom you're you've got it locked down for two years access for 997 bucks plus all those other educational bonuses i'm throwing in with my compliments today so um, but you gotta act quickly on it before the end of the day tomorrow to make sure that you take advantage of this before the price goes back up so do lock that in i want to see if we had any questions on the grand slam options strategy as well so feel free to pop in any questions real quick before our next speaker and and uh and so uh jackson says uh, uh okay what broker should we use well as long as you can um get your trades filled um with with your options broker you know it's not it's not a futures broker it's just just like you trade your stock and options account and saying okay when we call it a trade we say okay get in and buy this option at this price as long as they can fill that and get you in and get you out, then great, even if you're just doing one contract. So the important thing is that you should talk to them, though, if you become more active, that say, you know what, you shouldn't be paying a ticket charge, you should be paying, the more active you become, you shouldn't even be paying a buck of contracts, you should be well under that. Like I said, I've got accounts where I'm paying a half buck a contract uh, with no ticket charge. So to me, that's really important, and if you're not getting that, you say, I'm gonna start calling around or see if they're gonna give you, uh, give you, that better rate usually they will because they realize it's a it's a competitive environment out there so don't be afraid to ask that'll save you money um so um so you say okay it's not the same as our fang program says another trader correct we have a fang options program that's more of a quick in and quick out uh, over a couple of days on the big five fang names but that's different you know I, I do trade facebook microsoft apple and variety of names here in grand slam as well um so the beauty of this too is that we can send out a trade typically at any time during the trading day. So you just need to make sure that you set it up when you get signed up to not just get your real-time emails access, which would be one way you can get the trades, but also you'll get follow-up instructions on how you can set up texting. It's no additional charge for the texting. You just have to have unlimited texting on your cell phone plan so you're not getting hit with extra data charges. How do you protect from good and bad news, says Arcentra? Um, well, essentially what we do is we take a diversified approach. So we're not all in on any one name. We spread ourselves out across a variety of names where we can kind of hit it quick. And like I said, they're not always just the household names. We can trade special situations where we're seeing this pattern develop. Because essentially this, this combination of the three indicators I share with you today is about finding all three of those coming together at the same time. If I only get two out of the three working, I don't take the trade. Two out of three ain't bad, but it ain't good enough for me. I need all three of them to be working to to take a trade. With that, it's kind of like three rivers flowing into one. It makes a much more powerful river. The same thing, three trends flowing in the same direction into one bigger trend makes a much more powerful trend that you can trade and leverage with Grand Slam options. So um, you don't have to have the indicators, David, on your platform. Um, you can watch other indicators like per, like uh, percent R uh, to get the same idea. That's true. You can, um, and I'm glad you like to use the indicators. Um, so yeah, you can certainly follow along percent R. Just watch that top 20% and bottom 20% of readings on the daily chart as our main guide there on the percent R indicator. Uh, so I know I'm, my time is up. I appreciate you uh, being with us today. There's a couple more great speakers coming right up. So I'll hand it back over to Anna and she can get you ready for our next speaker. If you've got any questions, you can see from that order page I share with you, you can call us at 800 Big Trends or email us clientcare at bigtrends.com. Thank you. All right, good morning. It's nice to be here, everybody. I'm Sunny Harris. Uh, I don't know if you know me or not. I do get tired of giving my credentials, but I'm gonna give them to you anyway because you might not know who I am, but I'm gonna to talk today about being a pragmatic trader. So I trade the N-mini primarily, that's what we're gonna talk about, but we're also gonna talk about other things and at the, near the end of my presentation, I'm gonna open it up to you. I hope you will raise your hand or type into the chat box because we're gonna take your symbols and I'm gonna look at that. Uh, Let's see what we've got here this morning. These are a couple of quips and quotes. I've got a, a whole, well, let's start that. My website is called moneymentor.com, and uh, it's got everything I know on it. Just real quick, there's moneymentor.com. Just dragged it onto your screen. And uh, I've got a whole section called quips and quotes, and here's at the bottom is the link. It's a hyperlink for those who will get the PDF later. 
Uh, so one of my favorite students of all time said, Manny said, Sonny Harris will save any student of trading an enormous amount of time, money, and above all, frustration. She combines an encyclopedic knowledge of trading systems, mathematics, and software with a master teacher's ability to focus on exactly what is relevant to the student. She combines all this skill with a personable, warm, and friendly manner that is rare in any teaching situation. So that's unsolicited and it's beautiful and I thank him very much for saying that. And then another student of mine says, part Einstein, part Will Rogers, she's absolutely brilliant. So I would like to bring this to you and help you become uh, a trader. I've been trading for 40 years. Oops, let's go back. Disclaimer. Um, you need to read this. You need to know that everything that I'm saying today and then my website and in the articles I write for Traders World Magazine and uh, the live trading room that I have, all these things are educational. Trading is and in, in investing are speculative and include risk of loss. Past performance is no indication of future results. All of us who trade have losses. That's just the fact of life. We all have losses. Um, in the 40 years I've been trading, I've had two years that were losing years. Admittedly, they were near the beginning of my uh, tenure as a trader, but we do have whole years that are losing sometimes. Stock market got you down. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and let me help you get started all over again. I love to help new traders and traders who are stuck and not getting past the I'm not profitable yet, Mark. So give me a call. My number's at the bottom, moneymentor.com. And recovery can happen. But it's not always going to be the way you might expect it. Recovery from stock market losses might just take the form of trading from both the long and the short signs. If you've been only buying stock, maybe I need to teach you how to go long and short both and profit from down moves because we do have those. Um, a lot of people get into revenge trading by putting on more contracts. So uh, the only way that's going to work is if and only if I'm a mathematician. So this means if and only if you have a strategy with the, with the mathematical expectation greater than one. So you click on that and you, you'll see uh, just a second. Well, it's supposed to take you to moneymentor.com to the glossary and it's having a, a little bit of time, lag time loading there. But the, if you click on these in my presentation, when it goes out, you'll see that that takes you to the extensive glossary I have on moneymentor.com. Uh, everything I do that's not trading is about education. I write books, I program for people, uh, I love to mentor and consult with people, and uh, it's all about education. And it might just take the form of learning more about how to do it on your own. So, of course, I have an education course if you'd like to do that. And it might take you getting a mentor or a coach. Uh, all of the great people in life have coaches. I have two coaches. And uh, if, if you get a coach or a mentor, it makes your life all that more simple. And it might take the form of buying specialized indicators to assist your decision making in your own trading. So, uh, of course, I believe in my own indicators. Uh, my primary indicator is called Sunny Bands. And I talk about that just the same way John Bollinger talks about his Bollinger Bands and has for many, many years now. I've known John for a long time, and he and I both talk about our bands. I'm an author, Trading 101, Trading 102. Electronic Day Trading 101, Getting Started in Trading, and Trade Station Made Easy. And now I'm writing a new one with a friend of mine, Samuel K. Tennis, who's asked Mr. Easy Language, and it's called Trade Station Easy Language, O-O-E-L, Made Easy. So it's the object-oriented easy language that's within Trade Station. That's, I call it the hard language. It's not the easy language, it's the hard language. But it has so many uh, capabilities. I mean, you can just about do anything with it. In fact, I had one of my programmers uh, write a, a program for me to read uh, email lists out and sort them to get uh, uh, duplicates in, in 
make sure that uh, I wasn't I wasn't stuck with lists that were old and uh, out of date and had duplicates in them. So I've been trading for 40 years. I'm a mathematician and a programmer, an author. I'm an international speaker. I love to mentor, mentor and educate. And I've had a number of uh, technical analysis of stocks and commodities magazine readers awards for uh, my solving the puzzle course and for my private consulting. And here are the books that I've written so far. And I'm still designing the cover on the other one. But that's, uh, I started writing books because uh, I'm a trader and I had to teach myself to trade because 40 years ago there wasn't a lot of software. Uh, we had CompuTrack uh, with Tim, from Tim Slater and the CompuTrack tag seminars, which I went to 11 of those. And um, that was a fantastic time when you could meet all the gurus and listen to all their ideas in person. That was wonderful. So I kept notes as I was learning. I kept notes of every question I had and every answer I got. And that became my Trading 101 book. So I had to uh, believe in myself and do it all by myself. But I wanted to share what I learned with others so that they, too, could become traders. It was kind of a closed door thing back then, uh, especially for women. But uh, even the guys had a hard time getting in, knocking on that door and getting an answer. I was number one trader for two years. You can see there I was right on the top of that with 365.5% interest uh, or profit that year. And then the next year I got 178% profit, which put me still on the top for the next year. And that was when I was a, a CTA, which I am no longer. I trade only for myself and no longer for other people because I found that when you're trading for other people, they want to call you every day and ask you how you did. And that kind of energy is difficult when you're a trader and concentrating. It's really difficult to answer everybody. Oh, look, I got that wrong. It's 365.5. Yeah. But I was using my sunny bands and my dynamic moving average to get that 365%. And I'll show you exactly how I did it. So one more thing. There's the Stocks and Commodities magazine and consistently rated in the top 10. I was number three there. And there is what I look at every day while I'm trading. And I'm going to show you my screen after a while. And uh, we'll be looking at exactly what I look at. And I'll take your stocks or futures or uh, cryptos, whatever you want to look at. We'll look at it together and I'll. Uh, explain to you where it is and where I think it's going based on my sunny bands, which is this, uh, the two green channels. You can see uh, in this case, it's a daily and a weekly channel. And uh, then at the bottom, you'll see my dynamic moving average histogram. And this gives me signals, which also are sometimes, and then in this case, you can see they're divergent and the divergence tells me what to do, get in, get out, long, short. And it shows me everything I need to know. So there's that same chart again. It shows me ideal turning points in, you see the red on the top and the blue dot at the, at the bottom of each move. And it uh, shows me the longer term direction because I've got two sets of sunny bands on there. It shows me the current direction in the, uh, well, in this case, it's the daily Sunday bands, but when I'm trading live, I use one minute and five minute on the E-mini. It shows me ideal entry and exit points. It gives me the size of the anticipated, anticipated move, and it gives me profit and loss protection stop areas, all on this one chart. And I've been using it for more than 30 years with no optimizing. Somebody asked me the other day, how, how often do you have to optimize it? I don't. It's been the same inputs for 30 years. So you, of course, can have these for your own. This is not what I do for a living. I make these available to people because it's what I use in my own trading and I believe in it. So Sunny Bands, the dynamic moving average histogram, the blue and red dots were my PHW, which stands for potential hourly wage. And that's, uh, well, I'll, I'll say, I'll repeat myself when I come to that slide. 
but it's basically uh, if you can if you can't make more trading than you make working at McDonald's, you might as well work at McDonald's. So a lot of people call me and they say, I've had losing year after losing year, and I've been trying this now for 20 years. I got one yesterday. And um, how do I how do I change that? How do I turn it around? And so with a little mentoring, that can be a possibility for you too. So that's all there is to it for me, three simple indicators. And of course, there's the link to so you can see all my products, but those are the Sunny Vans, DMAH, and PHW are the, really the three that I would suggest to you. To trade or not to trade? Answer these questions before you sign up. You know, if you're going to be a trader. Are you going to make more money than working at McDonald's? Is it your passion? Do you want to do this more than anything else because you have to to keep up with it? And are you willing to devote yourself to it? Trading can be an exciting business. And in fact, it's even more exciting when you're losing money than it is when you're winning. And you get into revenge trading when you're losing money. You're going to make it all back at all costs. And it's usually the all cost that happens. And I've never found that revenge trading is a good thing to do. The nice thing about having this independent way to make a living is you've got no employees, no boss, no office politics. And it's just you in the market. You don't have to have an office. You can trade from a desk in your bedroom if you want to. In fact, I have a funny story about that. I, back when I was a CTA, which stands for Commodity Trading Advisor, uh, the NFA came to my, or the, yeah, I guess it was the NFA, came to my door at 6.30 in the morning when trading started. And of course, I was in my pajamas trading in my downstairs office. <laughs> And they wouldn't let me change clothes. So they, they were there all day long with me in my pajamas. So I never traded in my pajamas again. So let's start with the pragmatic here. To make a living trading, you must have a goal amount that you need to make per year. So, I mean, you know, if you think if you live in somewhere else besides California, <laughs> you can make a lot less and still live per year. But let's say that uh, you're interested in making $120,000 a year. That would be your replacement salary for whatever you're working at right now, let's say. So if you divide that by 12 months, you get that you need to make 10,000 a month. Now that sounds like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to make 10,000 a month trading? Because that's, that's very profitable. So let's divide that by four weeks per month. So you get $2,500 a week you have to make. Still seems like a lot. Let's divide that by five days, and now you need to make $500 a day trading, all right? It's not so bad when you look at it that way. Let's go ahead and divide some more. So $500 a day means, now there's, in my futures trading, there's six and a half hours per day. Actually, there's 23 hours per day because uh, S&P 500 trades 23 hours a day, and it closes at uh, 2 o'clock on Fridays and opens up again at 3 o'clock on Sunday. So there's more hours than that. But let's say 6. So you need to make $85 an hour. Now, that's a lot more than McDonald's, right? But if you're a short-term trader like me, you can go even further and divide that into five trades per hour in the E-mini. So you're taking a trade every 12 minutes. That means you need to make $17 a trade after slippage and commission. Now, trading one contract, you can make $120,000 a year if you can stick to these pragmatic goals. You know, it's just, it's just math. It's just arithmetic. It's not even math. So that's doable. One contract, 17 bucks to trade, five trades in an hour. That's trading a one and a five minute chart together. So that's what I mean by pragmatic. Okay. That's great, Sonny, but how do you make $17, not lose 100 I'm glad you asked that question. It's a matter of getting in near the bottom and out near the top. Notice I said near because you're never consistently going to change, check, going to catch the actual tops and bottoms. That's just, it just doesn't happen. You might get it a few times. I've even had a hole in one playing golf, but I'll probably never have another one. So no one does that for an extended period of time. I think that a lot of um, 
people who are fairly new to trading or who are losing money and uh, excuse me for that. People who are losing money and want to know how to make money think that everybody but them makes money. Everybody but them catches the highs and lows. And that's not true. We all have rough periods. We all get bad advice and we all have miss catching the, the next big crash. So let's go back to the slide I showed you on slide number nine and we'll start taking it apart. Here's uh, Tuesday. I recorded this. Here's, I don't know if you can hear it, if my microphone's strong enough, but, or my speakers are strong enough, but you can see there that's actually trading the E-mini one minute chart and it hit a little downdraft. You can see how fun that is to watch it. Where is it going? Right down to the sunny bands. See, you can watch that even as it, as it happens. And you get scared and you think, well, it's not going to make my prediction, but it touches that sunny band and that's it. So you see what a, what I do, what a real trader does, you watch that. But according to Mark Twain, if a stock market, if the stock market experts were so expert, they'd be buying stock, not selling advice. So when you choose a mentor, be sure that he or she is actually a trader. And I've been trading for 40 years since 1981. And I want to tell you that trading is about three things, where to get in, where to get out if you're right, and where to get out if you're wrong. I attribute that to my friend Joe Kretzinger. It's put it succinctly. It all starts and ends with a chart with me. And this is all I ever need. This chart, which is the same one that we saw before. And now we're going to break it up. So here's the same chart and I've drawn on, and this is price alone. I've drawn two things, orange lines, horizontal lines that I call attractors. They're like support and resistance, but there are more things than just horizontal lines to attractors. So I've drawn it where I see repeated hits of price. See, run two, three, four, five there. Here it hits it with one and there one. And I drew it back here and you'll see that it goes across and it's resistance again as one, two, three, four, five prices before it drops. The other thing I've drawn, these other lines are Fibonacci retracement lines. And you can see where values are predicted to go and it goes right to that point and then bounces as soon as it's down there. So, oh, I saw the attractors before I talked about them. There's the attractors <laughs> and here's the Fibonacci retracement. So that you can see that that came from that other chart. And then I had a, a little indicator that I programmed uh, called pennant formations. These are basically triangle congestion periods. And you, I had the indicator so it would draw the blue lines as the triangle form. It has red lines at the top and bottom to show you where uh, the, the uh, high and lows of the consolidation period were. And you can see that things happen after this consolidation. You hit the triangle, you break out of it and you go down. Hit the triangle, break out of it and go down. Sometimes it's just the opposite. You hit the triangle and you break out to the upside. But in this last few days, it was doing a down move. So that's the picture I got for you. And then my friend Sam Tennis, who he and I are working on the OOEL book together, uh, wrote the code in OOEL to put the yellow highlighting in that area. So that's an update to some of these pennant formations. If any of you are clients of mine and have the pennant formations, give me a call or an email and I'll send you that update. Then we add the sunny bands to this and you can see the first set and it's the dark green and darker teal lines. In the middle is the gold and purple moving average that's called dynamic, my dynamic moving average. And I call it that because I found out a long time ago that whipsaw is the one thing that can kill you as a trader. You can catch the trend right and it goes forever and ever and everything's wonderful. And then you get into these sideways whipsaw periods, which all charts have all tradables have get in there and 
and you lose all the money that you made on the trip. That happens time and time again. So I started out trading uh, 40 years ago. I was trading the DMA, no, sorry, trading the ADX and the MACD together. And it worked really well, but uh, it wasn't close enough to the highs and lows for me. I wanted to get in at uh, more precise entry points. So I created this dynamic moving average uh, with my knowledge of mathematics, and it uh, calculates its own inputs. So you give it seed values to get it started at the far left of the chart, and then from that point on, it uses the speed of the market uh, to, to calculate its own moving average and you can own moving average values. So the gold you can see when the gold is on top, it's uh, overall long. It's, and here it just barely gets in a little short period, but hardly, oops, we went the wrong way. Hardly there. So it just barely makes that turn, but I don't take trades when it's flat usually. So long here, short in there, long here, pennant formation, then it goes short, and you can see that it's going to those, uh, bouncing off the sunny band and then going down and staying under the DMA, dynamic moving average, for the entire rest of the chart. Now I add the dynamic moving average histogram, and that's at the bottom. You see all these red and there's a gold and more red and more gold vertical lines. And you can see as that goes down, it's telling me to be short all this time from back here when it was red. So I would have been short up in this area right here. Right there, it would signal along except that it's too narrow, too shallow. Uh, those values aren't big enough for me to pay attention to. Uh, if you're following this closely you, and you want to go fast, mm, going to go fast you get in long back in here and then you're short again for an extended period of time so those lines and their divergence from uh, the, the overall direction of the market tells me everything I need to know let's zoom in on that contract then we can see uh, closer in where the signals are so the pin information break out of the pin information at the same time we've got green vertical bars here telling me to go long then up in here it's gold which is even stronger long but then we get red and that's our warning I'm gonna, that's our warning to go short right there on that red so this is the bar that we would get in to go short it penetrates the dma goes on down hits the inner sunny band inner lower inner so it follows that keep following that line and then it breaks down and even hits bottom sunny band so as it hits the outer lower outer band then we that's if it penetrates that we look for the blue bars to be going back up again and then that would be our long signal so now we're going to do what i promised we're going to do we're going to analyze some of your choice of symbols you tell me the symbol and i'll pull up the chart and tell you what i think so let's see where the chat is here Thank you very much. Chat room, chat room, chat room. Dashboard attendees. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't see it, but if anybody can help me out, I'd appreciate it. I would really like to do everybody else's symbols. Questions, here we are. There's question CVS, you got it. Let me bring up TradeStation. TradeStation is the program that I use for my trading. I, I've used all kinds of them. I've used uh, NinjaTrader and MetaStock and CompuTrack right back in the beginning and um, at least 10 different things in my own trading. As you can see here, this is live. This is the E-mini live. You see the pennants and these little dots show me the previous direction of the trend of the bar and then the green showing me how that bar is moving up a little bit now. So here's the bottom and the green shows me up. On the left, I've got uh, my list of the stocks that I'm holding in my portfolio. 
and uh, over here we've got the quick trade bar, which I'm not about to take a trade in at this moment in time. But we're going to see CVS. We've got one stock at least there. So it's CVS on a on a daily basis is what we need to do. So let's put daily in here. And there we go. So oh, it's got numbers scattered all over the place because they're not touching the pennants like they should. So CVS has been in a little bit of a downtrend here. Uh, you can see the red, 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 red going down, and the slope of these lines is down. But right here changes. And that's where uh, that would be a buy point in my way of looking at my charts and my indicators. So it would be a buy from, oh, that's the first up one right there. So 81.16 up to currently 87.54. Uh, I would get a horizontal line. So drawing horizontal line right there is the target at 90. 90 and a quarter, but I would say that's the current target for CBS. Do we have another symbol? We'll take the person whose name is last, comma, first. <laughs> SNDL. What's that? SNDL. Sundial Growers. I bet I know what that is. Let's squeeze this up a little bit this way and we'll see we had one of these uh, meme stock kind of pop-ups there to almost four dollars it's been going flat to down it is showing signs of uh back here it gave a buy signal except we didn't get any newer highs so right in here's where we would buy and it just pops right up and then gives a an exit signal again We've got a lot of buying, but we're looking for new highs, which we're getting back in here. So this would be a buy for me, if and only if it goes above that sunny band. Do we have any more? I don't see any more questions. So if that's the case, uh, oh, in uh, Baba, let's look at Baba. Well, that doesn't look so good, does it? Looks like that's just continuing on down. And nevertheless, let's squeeze that a little further and see what we've got. That's that's new lows. I wouldn't be a buyer of that one yet. Um, W-Y-N-N, -N, okay. A lot of these stocks are... Well, the, the Dow's having trouble making new highs. The e, the S&P and the NASDAQ have made new highs. I, last time I saw that happen uh, was in a dot-com blowout where we had a, a bust following that. And it's now September, so I am anticipating October to come next. And that's when uh, we have an awful lot of weakness in the market. So I'm holding a lot of stuff but i'm careful right now because it i'm looking for a possibility of a, of a downdraft in the next one to two months not necessarily but it might so I, i'm just being very nimble this one uh the dma on this one just turned positive so when resorts looks pretty good at that point let's put a horizontal line on it up here's where our high is right let's see that looks really tight right in there you see that attractor in matt we could even put it so it's in a range from here to here uh so we're looking maybe at going up to 119 let's say 118 and a half something like that um but if we count the waves it's been down, 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 down. That was lower, so it's not a one. This is a possible one forming right here. So it would have to come back down to the uh, dynamic moving average and then go up in a three wave to about this area, 112, something like that. 
Um, nobody really knows for sure, but that's that's the way I look at it. Okay, Amazon. I probably should watch my time here a little bit. Okay, Amazon. Hit the bottom sunny band right there coming down on red. It dropped really fast, of course, right here. That was, I don't know what that was, earnings or something. But it big drop and big drop in Amazon to me. I, I, I trade the things I know. You know, I trade where I live. So Amazon's uh, the way I do all of my shopping. So I, I hold Amazon. Uh, I love Tesla. I love Verizon, things that, that I know in my own life. So whenever Amazon drops, I buy more. Whenever Tesla drops, I buy more. So here's a nice drop point. It goes down under the sunny bands on red, pops up on a blue. That's where you buy as it penetrates the lower inner sunny band. You'll see here that the gold and, and purple have crossed. So that's our first uh, official buy signal would be there at the crossing. But if you go back to my DMA, you can see that that's where the buy signal was when it turned green. So that would have been long from, oh, let's say 3,200 and we're up to 34.95 now. So that's a, a nice profit on Amazon. Let's see if we've got any more stock symbols. FB, okie doke, Facebook. That's just always good. Um, if I put, if I say weekly, let's see this. Then back here is where I see the one way, two, three wave with uh, extended fourth in there. I mean that's a that's a congested fourth, and then an extended fifth going up. So. Uh, that's due in my calculations for a little bit of a pullback. How far um, down here to this DMA, which is at 344, so it could drop as much as 30 points and still and still be going up. Let's see. I'm going to take one more if I can find them. Oh, here's one. Net. Let's look at net. Well, isn't that just lovely? Um, I don't see where the waves are at that point. Let's go back to daily on this one. Okay. This thing is so strong, it's been in divergence on the DMAH the entire time it's been going up. So that's, with that divergence and that move up, that's just a very strong move. And it's shown uh, another gold bar over here to the right, right there. So if that breaks out of this sunny band, I'd be a buyer of that, even though it looks overextended. I can add another uh, indicator to this of, of mine. I have hundreds of indicators here, but I have one where I used my smoothing algorithm for the dynamic moving average to, um, uh, well, let's see, where is it? RSI, not RSI, I want RSI smooth. There we go. This is RSI, but I've smoothed it with my dynamic moving average uh, algorithm so that I can read it a lot better. It's not as jaggy as the standard RSI. As you can see here, this thing was overbought at that area. It uh, got a breather there as it moved down a little bit and then just took right off again. But this high in the RSI is not as high as the other high. So that's kind of scary. So I would, I would, as I said, be a buyer over here. Things can be in overbought territory for a long, long time while price moves up and that's exciting in fact. Um, the more it's overbought, the higher it's likely to go in a nice up move. So this one is coming back over the 60 line. That's I use 60, 40 and 60 on mine rather than the uh, traditional 20 and 80. Uh, having read Connie 
Brown's worked, and I believe she convinced me that 1640 were really more likely where the breakouts were. All right, so that's that. Let's see if we can get back to the presentation. So I'm going to ask if there are any more questions about anything, and then uh, if I can answer any questions, then, and there are no stupid questions, please just answer anything, ask anything you want me to answer. You've got me here for free. I normally charge $495 an hour uh, because I'm not just a programmer and a consultant. I'm actually a trader. A lot of people and they member here in this group. Um, no polls, no questions. Anybody else have any questions, please? Do I use the difference between Bollinger bands and mine? That's a very good question. Uh, Bollinger bands are based on an exponential moving average in the center with uh, bands that are uh, on the outside of that based on standard deviations. My bands are based on my dynamic moving average, which avoids whipsaw, unlike exponential moving averages, and um, also. I use average true range to compute where the bands go. So uh, average true range tells me where the market is going, whereas a standard deviation tells me where standard deviation tells me where the market was going. So uh, that's that's the main difference. Is it two different moving averages and two different calculations for bands? Uh, and and that math for mine, of course, is proprietary and uh, you, you have to sign an NDA to, to use it. Uh, my favorite, my three favorite signals <laughs> are the DMAH and the sunny bands and Fibonacci lines. Is Trey Station better than Ninja? I cannot possibly answer that question. Um, Trey Station has its own proprietary easy language to program in. Ninja Trader uses it, its beautiful program powerful too and it uses uh, C++ which I don't know so I'm unable to program in it it's, there's no easy style language Metastock has a great easy to use language but uh, I don't I don't program C++ yet so I can't use Ninja really to do what I do how do you scan for good intraday trading that's an interesting question for scans let me see if I can bring back up my trade station on that. So for scan on this, I would I would add uh, I would add my DMAH to it is what what I'm going for here. That's that's not the H. That's just without the H. Anyway. I would add scans to this radar screen. I would change the interval to five minutes or one minute. And I'm not getting the time frame up here. For some reason, my part of my bars are missing. So I would change the interval to intraday and I would put my PHW on here. PHW for radar screen uh, tells me. Um, which are the most tradable? So of these things I've got up there, I'm going to change the studies to edit this and general, and I have to give it extra bars back for it to compute. So that tells me, of course, that the NASDAQ is the highest. So I would double click to get these sorted. NASDAQ is the most tradable. S&P makes four thousand dollars versus the ten netflix on a daily basis during this period of time would make you two thousand tesla one thousand five hundred so this is what i use for my scanning is this phw and it tells me everything i need to know about what's the most tradable and of course it works on any time frame in any symbol let's see how i'm doing for time here I think I've got five minutes left. Hi, do you use tick charts for futures trading? 
Uh, I use 233 bar tick charts to um, not to trade on, but to just to watch because it, it gives me a good idea of where the market is uh, playing at the moment. Uh, and I use another indicator, which I took off of these charts called Bean Ticks. And that, that tells me the tick volume of the chart. It tells me how fast the market's moving, how many uh, shares are trading by the rapidity of it. And the noise tells me either being for it's going up bong or if it's going down and click if the market's going sideways. So I can listen to this Bean Ticks indicator which, by the way, I give away for free. So if you've got TradeStation or multi-charts and you want to have Bing ticks, just send, shoot me an email and I'll just get that right out to you. I need to know your email address. Okay, so I'm going to give you, thank you so much for attending. And Anna, thank you for hosting. And I want to give you my contact information. So email me, call me. It's on, This is my cell phone number. I answer it myself. I'll be happy to talk to you. All right. Thank you so much, Anna, for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And thank you, audience. Thank you uh, for, uh, for, um, for your time, everybody. I appreciate it. I have um, a, a very interesting presentation. Hopefully, you will enjoy it. Um, what? One second. Let me see here. Um, okay. So, we're going to be talking about volume profile, please. Volume profile is uh, one of the things that um, it, it's becoming into the uh, trading uh, arena and the name is getting there. Uh, uh, many people don't understand it. Many people think it's complicated, but it's been in the, uh, in the trading arena for a long time. Uh, most people don't understand it. Um, they think it's complicated. It's not, especially the way I present it and the way I show it. Uh, for example, th these are the charts that I, I look at uh, on a daily basis. I look at the RTY. I don't have data feed, so I disconnected myself so I can have a clear view and uh, uh, focus on this presentation. So I have RTY, the Russell, the NASDAQ, the ES, the YM, uh, the crude, the NADGAS, gold, silver, yen, euro, Aussie, pound, Swiss, Canadian. Now, some of these you can trade in the Forex market also in the futures market. And as you see my presentation, uh, the name is Trade Futures and FX with Volume Profile, okay? So we trade them both uh, at the same time. Of course, less futures, more, uh, more, uh, 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 I'm sorry, less Forex, more futures. I focus on the futures market more, but every now and then we will get a very big move on the Forex side. Also, uh, the, the gold could be traded in the Forex market. As you see, I have a, a gold uh, Forex uh, chart here, uh, which is XAUUSG. And uh, not long ago, we called it long. And now I'm looking at it to come back down short. A um, couple of things you need to know. Um, we have a, a Telegram channel here, Te Telegram uh, software. Or, or, or delivery system. You can have it on your phone or on your computers and you can get my signals. Now, this is besides the live trading room that we have three times a week. So basically if the room, for example, today I closed, I don't have the room, it's my time off. I took a few days off before, before uh, we start again in September 7th. But again, I had a chance to trade. So I called the shots today, if you see here, Today is September 2nd, September 2nd, I start calling trades here on the, on the, on the Telegram. And I got basically some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trades, which I will show you. Okay. So uh, let's move on. Using volume profile is amazing because you can vividly see where the market wants to go. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide. Before you join uh, the trials, because I don't sell anything today. In a day like this, I don't sell anything, folks. What I offer, simply I offer you a trial to join us. Two weeks trial. Sometimes, you know, we extend it to three weeks just in case if we don't have enough activities, if the market is 
is sideways, is choppy, or you, maybe you didn't get a chance to join, to, to focus first few days. I'm flexible that way. Um, especially with my trading style, I don't just look for trading. I look for highest possibility trade. So what I look for, I look for 75%, okay, or higher of opportunities before I go to get into a trade. And I will show you uh, what I mean by that. Okay, so before you join any uh, uh, any trials, please go to to uh, the website and do me a favor. This is very important because if you join the trials and you have not seen what we're doing, you're going to be wasting the first week trying to figure it out. So if you go to the education tab, go to About Us, Education tab, simply go to a couple of videos that I want you to look at. First one, it's a live trade from our session. Second one is, uh, this is important. Second video is very important. It says two week trial. What should you expect in your free trial? That's important. The other one is clarify my trade calls on Telegram. You'll understand what I do. Okay, and I will explain what I do today as well. And there is another one the indicators that we use. This is a, a longer video, maybe 50 minutes, but it, it tackles our six or five or six indicators uh, portion by portion. The main portion, the main one, which is the first 15 minutes, I think it's about the volume profile. Folks, If you have, even if you don't join us, if you don't buy from me, if you don't join me, this is free. This will open your mind and your eye on eyes on a very powerful, uh, uh, indicator which is volume profile this is not a, a your regular lagging indicator so you have to pl please be, be aware that you're learning things for free okay and I have multiple other videos that you can join that can that can what you can watch there's another video that I want you also to watch and I usually joke about this but I really mean it unless you're getting married today you need to watch this video adult ADD and it how it manifests itself in traders now this is not my video I did not make this. This was presented to us by Dr. Kenneth Reed, a prominent doctor who actually was kind enough in 2014 to present to us. He comes back two years after in 2016 and present to us again. But this basically a, a continuation of the first one. You have to watch the first one. Okay. So besides that, we have our YouTube channel. Please, it's on the website. If you go to the YouTube channel, we have a lot of videos you can watch. Okay and we will tackle other things as well as we go. Let me just continue with the presentation because I have I have a few things to show you. Um, next one is a little bit about me quickly, very quickly. That's not urgent because I offer trial. So this is not important. What, you, what is important when you join us for two weeks, this is where you have to make your decision. You have to see, even if you don't join us, as I said, you will learn a lot. And I always answer questions. If you if you private message me, uh, this is Telegram, for example. Uh, see, I have private messages, hundreds of them, from students, prospective students, trial members. So just message me if you need anything, and I can answer your questions. Going back to this. I started in 2001, actually earlier than that, but officially 2001 with Forex. Switched to futures in 2005. I spent six months trying to understand the bid and ask ladder. Now, we don't use bid and ask ladder at this time. I don't use it. But whatever we are using basically stemmed from that. Why? Because the amount of uh, what moves the market basically is the amount of buyers versus sellers. Basic knowledge. Uh, uh, water moves from north to south, for example, if, if the northern, uh, north, northern uh, area is higher than the southern area. Vice versa, from the south, like the Nile, to the north, if the, if the southern area is higher than the north. So, so, so that's logic. So the same thing with the market. If you have buyers and sellers, they move the market. So why, not, why don't we focus on what moves the market, which is basically the amount of buyers versus the sellers? Okay, it's very simple, very logical. I developed a few a few indicators at that time. Um, most of them are still with us, but advanced, simplified. For example, this volume profile is now. I look. I don't look at volume profile now. Simply, I look at. Sorry, I don't look at bid and ask ladder. Forgive me. I'm I'm trying to focus. I don't look at bid and ask ladder anymore. 
Simply, I look at volume profile. Let's look at the RTY, for example, the Russell, which I traded today. Okay, I have the, for example, one day I have the daily volume profile. This daily volume profile, okay, uh, it combines a lot of levels. Look at that. You see this, how the volume profile is basically decreasing, getting thinner, getting, let's go to the hourly even better. This is your hourly volume profile. On the, on the right hand side, there's the hourly volume profile. And if I, if I explain this, okay, this is how I explain it. If you look at, if you look at this area from here down, maybe I need to change the pen color, pen color, erase all drawing, pen color, choose color, I'll make it blue. So if you look at the area from here, all the way to here, you see how this is. This looks the same, this in the volume profile. So this is what I call a, a continuation zone. And you have a little blue level here, and then another, another zone that is continuation all the way up to here. And I'm giving you some information nobody else will give you unless you pay for them. So, but what we have is more advanced than this, okay? And you will see also different levels uh, that you could basically trade. You see within within this continuation zone, there's another yellow level. There's a red level here, red area. We call this a knife. So the top of it is tradable, the bottom of it is tradable. There's the blue. If I go this way, if I show you a little bit more details my, by stretching this, let me erase. Okay, I'll take these lines out. So if I stretch this, you see how it's more vivid? Okay, see how it's more vivid now. And this volume profile is, is basically, we created it a while, I created it a while back with the help of a programmer. It's very user friendly. You can smooth and look at the edges. I am smoothening them, make them smooth, sharpening them if you want them to be sharp. Uh, also it reads, uh, it reads the live market volume and historic as well. So basically if you have, if you have, um, let me erase these. Okay. If you have less, if you have less uh, data inside your chart, it will read whatever you have in the chart. So basically, this is what is read now. The volume that we have here on the side. If you see how see how I'm increasing it. So the volume that I have here it represents only the time from August 31st at whatever time it is until now. If I add more bars into this, you will see it more. So that's that. These levels are very crucial to us. They represent they represent uh, buyers. They represent levels of support and resistance, um, which is basically what we look at. I don't look at any um, technical indicators. We don't look at technical indicators. Um, I mean, I have technical indicators. We use them, but eventually it will boil down to the level on the volume profile. How do we trade, and how many contracts do we do we trade? how I manage the trade call. This is where your education will start with me now, okay? We, we I call trades for three contracts, three contracts. If I wanna call a long, for example, I wanna see the market coming down to a support level. Logical, you have to look for support before you call it long. Three contracts, and if I, if I get my entry in here, for example, I have to know my stop loss ahead of time. Pay attention. I have to know my stop loss ahead of time, and I'll give you example, an example when we pass this stage. So three contracts. I will say, okay, take the trade here, this price. Your stop loss is here. Take first target at let's say 20 ticks. When I say 20 ticks, uh, because target one is on two contracts, on two contracts. So we take 20 ticks times 20. We just made 40 ticks. 40 ticks profit. So if I have a stop loss of 17, 18, 20 ticks, even if the runner gets stopped out after, I am I still made money. You understand that concept? And then when the market moves in favor, I will move, I will move my stop loss accordingly. Okay. Um, so this is how I how we trade. I focus on bigger time frames, bigger trades. 
uh, although I've been also teaching how to scalp and I've been uh, taking some scalping trades, for example, uh, and I will give you an example from today so you will understand uh, how we trade. Uh, some of you, some of you will look at um, pure technical indicators, okay? And they will have, for example, let's let's pick Fibonacci, which is the easiest thing. Everybody's familiar with Fibonacci's. You're looking for a short, for example, on on an instrument. So you have you have the market uh, going up, going up. Now you're looking for a short. And you have your Fibonacci levels. You have a Fibonacci level here. You have a Fibonacci level here. And you have a Fibonacci level here. You will say, okay, I will take a trade here. This is your 38%, for example. And I will I will take a uh, I will take it with 30 tick stop. You take the short, the market goes, stops you out, it comes to your 50%. You say, Oh, 50% is even better. I'll take it. You take it stops you out, comes here, comes back down. You say, okay, 50% is holding, but it's booked. So let me let me take it again. Comes back down again, you take it short, goes back up. Comes to here, this is your 60, whatever, 62, 68, 68%, okay? Sorry. This is your 68% and you missed the boat because now you don't want to take it. You lost three trades in a row. You don't want to take it. It might hold. It might not hold. You don't know because now you're you you say okay today the Fibonacci's are not holding. Okay, that is that is something that you need to 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 get over with. Why? Because Fibonacci's and other technical indicators. They, the, uh, although they work, but they only work when the volume profile uh, allows that. The volume, if the if this area is in a continuation zone, which I let me explain in more details. You're looking for a short, same thing. The market is going up, came back down. Initially, now it's going up, but you're looking for a short. However, now because you're trading volume prof profile and you learned how to trade with me you understand a couple of things you understand there are continuation zones no not this one you understand there are continuation zones if i look at let's say 60 minute chart on the volume profile here you know there is a continuation zone such as this one here is continuation and then rejections and then continuations and then rejections some of them are smaller some of them are bigger okay so now that being said, we go back. These continuation zones, you can easily transform them to, for the lack of, for the lack of uh, visuality, I'll transform them to, bo to boxes. You have continuation zone here, for example, and you have a continuation zone here, and you have in between something called rejection zone. So continuation, continuation rejection all right so now what do we do we're looking for, and this is the final rejection here this is let's say this is a very big rejection that i will colored in orange so this is a big rejection here are what do we do you're looking for a short okay now if you are having your Fibonacci levels and your Fibonacci levels are here, here, and one of them already here. So what, what's gonna happen? You will go to your level here. Are you gonna trade the short from here? No, because we're still in this area. This is your Fibonacci level. Now, you are going into the next continuation zone. This is my favorite area for, for shorting. Why? Because I already know my stop loss. My stop loss, it's not only, this is not the only instrument that, or sorry, indicator that we use. We use an indicator for confirmation. Remember, there is not only, the volume profile will give you the levels. The main thing that we are using for our trading, uh, 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 the, the trading execution is something called confirmation. 
okay? If I go back to this presentation, our method calls for anticipate, we anticipate, confirm, and then execute. So confirmation is key, is key to, to anything we do, okay? So let's go back to, to where were we here. So now we're looking for, I'm anticipating a short here, so anticipate, A. Now I'm looking for confirmation. Market comes here, I see confirmation coming in. Confirmation is nothing but market makers volume coming into the to the trades shown me they will flash in front of you and that's a, i will show you it's it's through an indicator that we call sell indicator that will take these uh, uh, entries and pop them in front of you tell you what what the market is doing whether it's, it's there's buyers coming in sellers coming in it will show you so you will join so once i see these confirmations i will know my stop loss is here why is my stop loss here why is it there? Let me be more clear. Why is my stop loss on the red line? It's not on the on the yellow line. Why? Simply because the red line indicates the entrance into next continuation zone. So if the red line doesn't hold, the yellow line will not hold either. So now automatically, instead of choosing 30 tick stop, my stop loss is 15 or 12 ticks. I know this because also my sell indicator confirmation showed showed it to me. So anyway, you take the trade, you take your first target, as I said, on the first two or whatever, for some reason, continues, continues. Now, second touch, I don't, we don't trade, so it goes back here, here we look for the same, and then finally we catch the trade and we go south. Now, does that prevent you from taking a long all the way to the main rejection? No, but we still can use the same methodology if you have some rejection here using a smaller chart you can take it okay let me show you now some of you are confused some of you will understand confirmation is the main thing let me show you in details what we've done today today i got up i thought i have i, I thought i'm not going to be doing anything the market is crappy for the whole week i'm going to just you know prepare my presentation and i'll be ready for today's presentation which is now but during the morning i'm watching I'm on Telegram. There's no live trade room today, although there is usually, but today, as I said, I'm I'm off until September 7th, which is, you know, next Tuesday. I decided to call a trade because it was obvious. I am looking for, look at this, September 2nd. Please pay attention to this. You've seen this, right? Everybody's seeing this. This is a recording from a live today, live session. I was doing a live session, but through Telegram. I said, September 2nd, I said, RTY 2300, area here is big resistance so what am i looking for i'm looking for a short from this area but the market is not there yet so i would say at 9 35 this is five minutes into the market open i said rty possible scalp long targeting 2300 and i said rty support is at 2288 area this is 9:38 a.m. You see this folks? So I'm looking for I'm looking for that trade. So now let's move forward. Moving forward, moving forward. Look at the market on the right hand side moving. Look at this. Moving, 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 moving. And at 9:50, you see that I typed RTY possible long. This is people see it. I have probably 162 members. You see here? Seeing it. Maybe some of them are not trading today. Some of them are trading uh, but keep watching. Watch this. I'm looking now. Remember, we talked about, and please pay attention to this. Remember, we talked about uh, these continuation zones and how they work. Now, I'm looking for a continuation along. I said 2288 area is support. Um, do you see me calling the trade? No, because I first I have to see the stop loss. Second, I have to see my confirmation. So I'm moving forward, moving, look, moving forward. Uh, RTY stop loss at 2286.5, if I call it. Did you see me typing it? RTY stops are 2268.5 if I call it. Why? Look what I found. I found this magenta line that is going to stop it. This is your block. This is your market maker's entry. Comes there, tells you the this is going to act a block. Now, first of all, remember, I anticipated the trade. Anticipated the trade. Second, I confirmed the trade. 
I confirmed my stop loss, confirmed the trade. Now I'm just looking for some momentum. Watch this. RTY long, 2288.5 or better. So the stop loss is known. Now everybody goes in. Market, see the lower stopped it, the lower line stopped it. We were we got maybe a few ticks. We got a few ticks in heat, but that's what it is. T1, take 10 ticks on as it is a scalp. So now, folks, my stop loss is about 15, 20 ticks because I took it uh, when it was coming down. When I called it, it was even at a good price. So I'm I'm saying to everybody, take 10 ticks on target one. So 10 ticks meaning um, we're taking two contracts on 10 ticks. That means we're making 20 ticks. So even if the runner stops out, I'm still either break even or making money. So that's what eliminates the uh, the psychological part of your trading. Okay. And since I said it's a scalp, you have to take 10 to 15 to 20 ticks first target. Okay. Got T1. Move stop to look at that. I'm typing and people are seeing it to 22, 70 to 87. So now stop loss is higher. Move it. Targeting 2300. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Look at the market. Keep watching. Move stop to entry plus 10 ticks. Why? Why am I moving the stop loss to entry plus ticks uh, plus 10 ticks? I'll explain. This is my continuation zone, and this is my continuation zone. So the market went up from this continuation through the next continuation, and my entry was here long. Okay, so now we went to the next continuation zone. So the market maximum is going to come back down here and goes back up. This is the rejection zone. So why do I keep my stop loss below the entry? Why don't I move it to plus 10 or maybe plus 20 here? You get it? Because if it comes back down to this zone, it's going to continue down. So why do I have to give up? Everything is logical, right? So continuous, continuous. And I see students saying they got this price. Uh, this uh, this member Ken, he's uh, he got in actually at a better price than me. Um, then I will bail out at plus 80 ticks runner. I said I will bail out because I was first of all looking for looking for a scalp. So 80 ticks runner plus 20 ticks I got. That's 100 ticks. That's 100 ticks in about a few minutes. But of course it took me uh, years and years to understand how the market works. All right. So now I'm looking for a possible reversal short when it gets to 20, 2300. Now, that being said, I'm looking for a short. Did you see me call it? Keep watching. This look, Nasdaq. Somebody was trading the Nasdaq. I said no, Nasdaq. I don't like it. And really, it was really not not good. Got out the runner 80 ticks. So 100 ticks runner. 100 ticks trade. Uh, and I said to everybody, that's your exit on the long art scalp RTY if you kept it. So some of them did not get the 100, uh, the 80 ticks runner plus the 20. Some of them kept kept the runner, runner to 2300. So that means they got 160 ticks or so runner, right? So now I'm looking for a short. We have students, they do other own trading. They do scalping, so that's great. Okay, and they help others by giving them their own scalping signal. I'm watching RT, RTY long term charts. Okay, so I'm looking for long term charts. I'm looking for a, for a short. Nothing at this time, despite the big resistance. See, I said nothing at this time. So I'm seeing the resistance, but I don't see anything. And that was my resistance line. Watch, keep watching. Keep watching. This is interesting. Remember, there's 160 students watching this. Look, RTY support, although I'm looking for a short, but there's a support to bring it back up to a new high. I saw that. Watch this. For now, you see that? I see possible long, one more high, I see I see possible one more high on RTY and watch just like that one more high on RTY I see it 
because market makers are flashing these entries in front of me. I see them. I see the market that wants to go get them. And I see the volume profile is not finished yet, right? Watch this. Watching for that rejection confirmation or reversal confirmation. I'm still watching. This is 10.29 a.m. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. I didn't call it. I'm looking for these magenta lines. See these magenta lines? I'm looking for that big confirmation because I'm going against the trend, but I'm looking at a bigger frame, right? I'm going against the bigger, sorry, against the daily or morning trend. Meanwhile, I'm looking at a bigger frame, right? Keep watching. Big resistance here, but I can't find stops. Folks, if I can't find stops, even if there's a million tick coming up, in my favor, I'm not gonna call that trade. I'm not calling that trade if I don't find stop losses. With the trials, you will know how specific I am. The only RTY stop loss I have is 2306, which is all the way the upper line, but I'm not calling it because this is a big stop. Won't touch it yet, won't touch it yet. Well, keep watching, keep watching. We still, uh, still watching RTY, this is 1054, 1045, sorry. RTY short now. 23.02 area or better. So I'm look, we are already at 23.02.06, so we already have a better pricing for the short on RTY. Because I noticed on the big frame, I had a flashing uh, uh, resistance and got, that gave me the stop loss, okay? Take 20 ticks target one for the short. Now we are short from 23.02, 23.03. We are short. Watch this. I see 2301 to be a hiccup. Take target one there. That's almost 20 ticks. 23, look at the 2301 is right here at the bottom if you see it. Boom. Got target one. And the students are talking about what they, the price they got. Okay. This trade end up not holding, but we made some money on it. So two calls on the RTY. Both of them winners, one of them 100 ticks and one of them was, was less. See that? And I also told them I have two targets and we move on. Okay, so now you saw what you saw. I have multiple uh, multiple videos like that in my in, the, in my YouTube channel. Please make, make time and, and watch and ask questions. It's very important for you to, to get, join the trial, okay? If I go back to the website, I want you to also understand, excuse me, on the website, once you become a, a full member, once you join us as a full member, you will have, um, you will have access to this. You will have access to the indicators. We strictly, for now, use Sierra chart indicators. Sierra chart, but I am working with the programmer to develop my indicators for Ninja Trader 8. Maybe coming in a month or so, maybe less. For now, you will get the monthly room links, live room. You will get level one. For example, level one. Level one tackles anything you need in terms of setting up indicators, how to get them, what it means to get them, and explaining the indicators, basic. And then level two, level, look, level three. It has details on how to read the volume profile, crash course on volume profile, advanced exam example, how I see, uh, how to use it for spot, for spot Forex, uh, level, uh, level five, the ACE method, anticipate, confirm, execute. Lesson one, scalping, 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 right? And we have record recorded trading, the tra training, I have training that is recorded from live sessions and which is basically 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's, it's very important, do or die area. What does it mean? What is knife trading? What is, how do you scalp? It's so many things that you need to know. It will take you probably two weeks to a month, but folks, you need to understand volume and how, and how it works. It's very important. Going back to the website, I feel the need to emphasize on a couple of things. If you go to the website, 
if you go to the traderinstitute.com, join the joining the trial is the easiest thing. Just email us. See, get your your two week free trial. So click on that. It will tell you how to do it. Basically, email our sales department. Okay. Now, another thing I want to emphasize on again, which is our our education. Uh, whatever I told you now, it's available on the website already. I have videos, for example, um, this one here, Jan January 14th, 21, for psychology versus my accurate trade calls. I, tr my, I you know, I try and focus on nothing but trades with 75% or higher in accuracy. Okay, and that's what I try and focus on now. Whether it's scalps, even my scalps are not for like you know small scalps. I look for bigger scalps. But um, there is another one here: secrets of swing trading. There is some volume profile videos, and you need to watch them. I also mentioned about the adult ADD video. It's 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 a gem. You have to watch this video. Um, membership, you know, basically membership is whatever it is. I don't sell anything. We we try and show you, and then then once you like what you see, we have different levels of membership, and we negotiate things. We offer special trial, special uh, uh, um, uh, prices all the time. So there's no worries about that. Uh, the idea is for you to qualify for the trial. Now that being said, when you join us, when you ask for a trial, expect us to ask you who you are, right? We, I need to know who you are. That means I, I, I wanna chat with you. I wanna, I wanna see that you are benefiting from the trial. Even if you don't join us, I wanna see that you are benefiting from it. You're not wasting anybody's time. You're not wasting your time or my time, right? Because what we do is very advanced. I have hundreds of students that they need my attention at the same time. I'm very dedicated. Just go to the, to the uh, um, uh, testimonials. They all these people are all in our our you will see them in the in telegram these people here in testimonials tens of them you will see them in the telegram channel also there's um a free telegram channel that you can find on the, on the website if you go to the main page you see this free trade updates on telegram channel at the bottom if you click if you go here it's welcome to TTI. This you can join. Now, Anna has a handout like this one here. Uh, it's a PDF, but on, on, on uh, uh, as this is as, uh, what do you call it? Based, uh, web-based. It has all the links that you need, how to join the trial, videos that you need to watch, etc. So Anna will give it to everybody as a handout on this uh, session. And basically, what else do we need to talk about next? Um, so if you are using support and resistance, using uh, indicators, uh, you have to understand many indicators uh, will not work. Some of them will work. Sometimes the same indicator will work today, will not work tomorrow. If you don't put it against a volume profile level, you would never know. So please learn your volume profile basis and and just you know it's 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 available volume profile if, even if you don't get it from me from us uh, many platforms have volume profile try and your best and understand it uh, the better yet join the trials um, what else do I need to say um, let me see if there's any questions at this time uh, uh, good education thank you Mo. Thank you. Okay. I don't trade with stops loss. Okay, take profit. Okay. No, a stop loss mo is one of the most important thing. Uh, it is very important. Uh, I I cannot be. I'm responsible for people's uh, uh, trading because I call trades for them. Uh, member, can you start trading with five? You can start with any account you want, but don't expect to make uh, from five thousand dollar account to make a like a million dollars. I mean, everything has to be logical, right? Um, tick charts, 
how do you use futures? How do you use tick charts? Hold on, let me read the, uh, I have a lot of questions. Uh, hold on guys, please. Okay, hold on. What did I miss? Okay, is, is TradeStation better than NinjaTrader? I use Sierra charts and I like it. I don't know about TradeStation. I used it many years ago, so I don't know. Um, okay, how do you use tick charts for futures trading? How do you use tick charts for futures trading? If I go to a chart here, as you see, I have tick charts. This is 67, 65 tick chart. This is a, a Fibonacci number. I use also 987 tick chart. It's basically just like any other chart. It's just the, the volume is, de is, is designed on it differently and is more vivid. That's all, nothing else. What I look for when I call, when I look at a trade, first of all, I look at the daily chart. This is my daily chart, right? I look at the daily chart. I, dis I look at my support and resistance on the daily. And then when I look at that, I scale down to the hourly. That's all I do. And then when, from, when, from the hourly, I scale down to 987 tick chart. Okay. Um, uh, I was, okay, Richard. Uh, hi, Simon. I was in a trial just before your break and I have to say your trades are very easy to follow. Thank you, sir. And quite, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I wait for my trades, Richard, and you've been with me for a week now. Hopefully you'll enjoy, you know, after the week after uh, September 7th. Um, how long does it take to learn my system? It depends, maybe two weeks, maybe a month. And if it takes you more than a month, it means, it means either you don't pay attention enough or maybe you're busy, but I am always here. This is a lifetime membership, so there's no time limit. I'm not gonna, Unless you choose the option for following the trade calls only, this is a lifetime membership. Also, I have another question. Um, after my trial, if I want to sign up, do you guys offer payment plans? I, I don't do, uh, or monthly, I don't do any of that. Uh, my sales manager does, but yes, we offer pl plans and we have monthly too. Um, I believe uh, we it is available. Um, can you send me Telegram? Uh, Mo, I can because uh, you left. Maybe I will when the, I, I, this will be recorded, right, Anna? And I'll just, maybe we send it to everybody. Uh, MetaTrader, I'm using MetaTrader 4. Okay, I have a MetaTrader 4, that's fine. Uh, 97 tick chart uh, is what determines the zone. No, my zone, okay, hold on. Yeah, that's a good question says is, does 9 987 tick chart determines the zone okay let's 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 start with the with the zone what is the zone I, i'm as i said i'm looking looking at the daily and i'm looking at my main zones for example big zones this is on the daily chart but then if i switch the daily i'm sorry not this one if i switch the the, the daily and i'll go to for example another chart i this is daily daily d d and i switch to uh, not let's say five minute chart, five minute chart, which I don't use, but let's say for, for lack of better examples. Five minute chart, this whole zone, it's on a five minute chart, is, is designed differently. It's designed, you see this? Like this, multiple levels and inside that one big zone. So meanwhile, if I am taking a short and this is a continuation zone and I wanted to catch here, Somebody that only does scalping from my students, for, I have many students that just do scalping. They will be here taking profits here, waiting for it to break the next one, shorting again, taking profits here, so they can trade it multiple times. You get the point. This zone could be broken to multiple zones. And if I show you in a chart, um, this is a 60 minute RTY chart. So from here, let's say, did you see the bottom here? From here, this level, all the way here, for example, I'll give you an example. This is one zone. But if I go to a 987 tick chart, you see this here? 
these are the two lines. You see these two lines, the blue and the blue? You see how many zones we have now, for example? And that's just an example. I have one zone, two zones, three zones, four zones, etc. So that how it works. Uh, that's why I look at big swings, but you can always do smaller swings, okay? Always. Um, other than that, switching to this presentation, these are some pictures from the past that I had. As, as I said, I've, I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Uh, 2006, my God, this is long time ago. I was a baby. <laughs> this is uh, local in um, the GTA Toronto, greater Toronto area. I did in Brampton, Toronto, Mississauga, North York. Um, I did uh, a few uh, overseas. I did uh, in, in the States. Okay, uh, this is 2004. Uh, this is Colorado, Denver, right? Just bear with me. This happens all the time when I do this presentation. Cut off. So this is Denver, Colorado, uh, back in 2012, 2013, Las Vegas, Nevada. All right. Um, so uh, one thing, uh, a few things to share with you, please. Uh, don't trade what you feel. I I always tell my students. Trade what you see, do not trade what you feel, okay? Um, whatever they say in the media or, or on the news, it's, to me, it's designed for you to take a position that is not going to help you because it's, 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 it's controlled by the same people who move the market, okay? Uh, but you don't realize that. You think, okay, uh, there's news and, and oil inventory came is going to come, come this way or you know, uh, uh, employment rate is going to come this way and you're going to take a position and then you're going to be disappointed. Don't do that. Trade the market as it shows itself to you. Look at the volume profile. Look at the market makers. What are they intending to do? Are they, are they intending to go long or short? Okay. And that's what you should be doing. RTY. If you see attractions coming here, it means that once you grab a short, you, you might see 2130 target. Uh, if you see the market wants to go up, don't fight it. Go up, trade it long, right? Don't don't uh, follow uh, what they want you to follow. You know the news usually is designed or controlled by the same people who are controlling the market. Um, so I always say trade what you see, not what you feel. And I think I'm almost done. Uh, any further questions, please? This is dramatic. <laughs> um, I promise you this, folks. I will make you understand and see the market's direction, show you how to pick trades with smallest risk available. And this is very important, smallest risk, uh, risk available. If I don't see it on the NASDAQ, I'll switch because I do have options to trade multiple different instruments. Look, Canadian, Swiss franc, pound, uh, Aussie, euro, yen, silver, gold, nat gas, crude, and all the indices, okay? Uh, for Euro, look at the Euro, Euro US, right? Look at the Euro US. Uh, look at the long that was created by this magenta line. Same thing with the Aussie, pound, same thing. Look at the pound. It touched, came back down, touched the magenta line, buyers came in and boom, moved up. A lot of trades in the, on the uh, uh, Forex market I miss because they happen overnight, but again, uh, some of them I don't. Some of them I catch them. Some of them I catch, I mean. Uh, I, I believe I'm done. My 45 minutes. Any questions, Anna? Any Anything to add? If you can share that uh, link, please. How long have I been on mute? Yes, Simon. I shared the Telegram link and PDF file. Thank you. How long have I been on mute? Uh, you haven't been oh cool okay maybe i touched it by mistake excellent so i explained uh, uh pictures and everything to everybody excellent thank you everybody thanks anna 